Hello, lovely YouTuber. Hello to lovely Gary there. Gary, it's a bit cheesier for me, but whenever this gets put onto YouTube, <laughs> I'm always going, there's Gary and he's down there. People probably go, what, who's she pointing at? <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> so hello, lovely Gary. How are hello. you today? I'm okay. I've got my cup of tea. And yes. I've, you'll notice that I'm now wearing a hoodie. Usually you see me in a T-shirt, but the, the weather is getting colder now. Um, so I think it's And nobody's going to want to put the heating on, so we're all... <laughs> but, you <laughs> know, a... I, yeah. I had a bit of a profound thought. Like, these thoughts do come to you, and I thought, do you know what? I'd rather put an extra layer on, not turn the heating on yet. I could put, get a hot water bottle, have a hot cup of tea. But I haven't had disruption in my life. I haven't had to go and be a refugee somewhere. I haven't had to go without anything apart from getting warm. And if I can just, you know, go without now and again, I think it also makes me feel better about other people that are perhaps in the world that are perhaps not as fortunate as me. So that was my thought. When I went to make my cup of tea and knew I was going to come online with you, that's what I thought. I thought, well, you know what? With a little bit of discomfort, it's not half as much as what other people have to put up with. No, exactly. That's a very, very good point. That's a very good point, which will probably lead into our little <laughs> mindfulness chat, because for anybody watching right now, yes, we are a craft based YouTube channel and we do have lots of incredible content on our um, little site here because we've got lots of lovely sewers um, who make amazing things. So if you are a serious sewist right now, I mean, when I say serious, you know, that means you can have other things in your head as well as sewing. But, you know, if you are thinking, well, actually, I'd like to learn how to do a cathedral window or something. Have a look on our listings because we've got so many amazing blocks and projects from incredible sewers. We've also got Gary as well doing wonderful things, making all sorts of lovely things. One of my favorite things you ever made, Gary, was the brush roll set because you could put brushes, yeah. paint brushes, makeup brushes, pens, you know, um, your scissor roll that you made as well. Mm -hmm. Put your scissors in. So um, Gary has made lots of lovely things as well. So do have a look on our channel and everything is listed. Projects, blocks, applique. Then we've got that chats as well. But this, our tea time tutorial, is a regular feature. We usually go live on a Friday, not live today. If you're watching the recorded version, doesn't matter anyway. But it is every Friday we put something on the channel. And what we do is we have a little playtime. And, and the main thing is, obviously, I run Crafty Monkeys, but I'm not a sewist, but I am creative. And Gary just came up with the idea of why don't we give you a tutorial every Friday? So I have learned the French knot. I have learned to hand hem. Um, and in fact, I did that the other day, a little bit of hemming, because my hem had come down and I thought, I know, you I was going to take it down the road, going to take it down the road and spend eight quid. No, I did it myself. So, you know, I have learned these things. So hopefully you can learn if you are a beginner like me, but also we do little mindful art things as well. Um, and so have a look in our playlist because we have got lovely little art sessions where you can just doodle with us and get 20 minutes of, of nice relaxation time. So do have a look in the tea time tutorial list. And also as well, I always put a time code underneath so that you can uh, always click ahead of all this stuff and go straight into the exercise. Today, we're gonna to be talking about money saving tips when you are looking at working with your fabrics. Um, so that's a really great chat. So if you want to skip ahead, I'm gonna put the time code for you and you can go right now. But if you haven't skipped ahead, we always start with a bit of mindfulness. And that doesn't mean that we sit here and meditate for 20 minutes. Um, it means <laughs> that we just have a, a two or three minute discussion. I usually give Gary a quote. I'm not going to give a quote today. Um, we all go through things in our life. And at the moment, I'm going through something in my life with a family member who is sadly going to be moving on their way to the next journey. Who knows what the next journey is? Gary and I have just been discussing that. But, you know, there, in, in all families and in all friendships and in all relationships, there are always bumps in the road. And I had a bit of a bump in the road with this person. And I've sat there in the last few days sort of berating myself. Oh, that shouldn't have happened. I shouldn't have said this. I shouldn't have done that. And, and, you know, I just want to have a quick, a little three minute chat, Gary, about hindsight and how absolutely useless it is in terms of because that's the phrase, isn't it? We always say, oh, but that's hindsight. And that's right. Hindsight is when we sit here now and we go, oh, I should have said this. But hindsight is useless because when we are in that moment, we choose what we feel is the best choice for us. So I just want to talk for a couple of minutes about regret 
and how we shouldn't really go down that road. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't ever have, you know, if you hurt someone, of course you shouldn't sit there going, oh, well, it was the only thing I could do at the time. No, but I think we shouldn't, we shouldn't be too harsh on ourselves and regret the choices we made that we made at the time. Because I once read a great quote that said that when we make the choices we have at the time, it's not a choice. It's the only path that we go down because the choice is so strong and so right for us that we choose it. But it's not really a choice. If that makes sense to anybody out there, yeah. we, we go that way. We go that way because we feel it's the right way to go. And so if you look back at something and you go, oh, I shouldn't have gone that way. Well, that's looking back on it. When you're in the moment and you go that way, it's because you feel that is the right way to go and you can't change that feeling. And therefore, you can't berate yourself for making that choice because you thought it was the right thing to do at the time, even if it wasn't. That's my exactly. thought. Don't berate well, yourself. <laughs> no, don't berate yourself hindsight is the almost like the moment when you've learned the lesson so you look back so those things that scenario all happen we're not time travelers and even if we could go back we changed it oh my god everything in front of it would then change and actually would it be as good or better than what it's going to be who knows but i don't think it would i think you know like you say you make these choices looking back you might think oh they were the wrong choices or why did that happen why did i do that but only at that moment can you use that moment of reflection to take forward so that if you are presented with the um that scenario or similar scenarios and quite often in life you'll find that those scenarios do have a tendency to repeat themselves 100%. until you get them right and yes. so forward thinking they are Okay, I'm going to move. I'm moving forward. But you take that little life lesson with you, that moment of hindsight, that moment of reflection, and you put it in your bag of, of tricks or coping ways or how I do things. You take that forward. And as you move it forward, you can use it. If you remember it's in the bag, remember it's in the bag that I'm going to do it this time. This is how I'm going to do it this time. I'm not, I know the little, the moment that that balance or that time that I took that journey, I wasn't really quite happy now at this reflective moment, how I did that. Okay, I know what it was. I'm going to put that in the bag as I move forward in life. And that little scenario comes up again. I know what to do or what not to do. That's what I think. <laughs> You've just answered my question because before we started this recording, I said, but I wonder why that fallout had to happen. And you've just answered it because I can now learn the next time it happens because it will happen again. The universe will test me now They because they've given me the biggest <laughs> test. They've given me the biggest test because sadly it happened to this person who is going to go on their next journey out of this world. And, you know, that's why, because it's a big test and the universe will give me that test again and go, what are you going to do this time? Because remember what happened last time. And, you know, part of it was self-control on my part and seeing the bigger picture and losing my temper. And the next time this will really make me think, is it worth it? Is it worth it in this moment to explode or to walk out of this situation or to say these things? No, it's not because life is very short. So yeah. there is the lesson. It was a lesson. And you know something, Gary? I have so many times in my life and the universe has gone, are you going to learn this time? And I think <laughs> I am going to learn this time. So it's been a lesson. So there you, there go. you go. You're right. You learn through these things. So don't regret the choices that you've made because it's a lesson and now you have a chance to live a better life brilliant oh that was the best bit of mindfulness i think we've done there you go hopefully that's resonated <laughs> with someone out there hopefully that's resonated i i heard something the day. one last thing on it i heard something the day someone said always look for patterns life is patterns and as you say you'll find that you're presented with the same challenge again maybe a different person in a different form but it'll be the same challenge and something will happen to me where it's that moment when do i explode and I'm hopefully, like you say, I'll go, ah, oh, oh, deja vu. So that's it. Life is about learning lessons. It's about learning lessons. So don't regret anything you do. No. It's a lesson. 
fabulous talking about lessons lovely gary <laughs> can't we do some money saving tips <laughs> oh, yes. oh talking about not being able to afford the heating i know so i think yes we what if we do money saving tips i think we can offset sometimes um, what we need to save money. So in our practices and our hobbies and our crafting and our artwork, it can be quite expensive. So if we can find little hints and tips to save us money in that certain section of our lives, our creative lives, I think that that can offset, you know, as our food bill's gone up slightly, as our heating gone up slightly, you know, and also it can make you, I think people are actually starting to have to make choices between do I eat or do I craft? You know, it yeah. could be that serious, you know, or do yeah. I have the heating on or do I, where do I sew? Because I can't necessarily put the radiator on or the fire on in that room where I sew. So, you know, that, that is, these are real choices that as us in that, you know, we're in the Northern Hemisphere and it is starting, we're going, we're well into autumn now. It's going to be a few couple of months or we'll be into winter. It's going to get cold. Some people are colder than others. You live more north than me. I'm yeah. slightly yeah. warmer than you because I've got maybe a degree or two more warmer than where you live. So that makes a big difference. So um, yeah, let's, uh, I said, I set a six, three each. Now I said, you could ask the tutors um, that, that you know, any tutors to give you some ideas. So I think we'll start one with you, then I'll do one with me, then backwards and forwards. And we should have six that hopefully some of you out there might already know some of these things, but some of them hopefully might be brand new. Okay, right, Rachel, yeah. you go with yours. Yes, yeah, so I did indeed ask my tutor. I asked a couple of tutors, um, and they straight away came back with some things. I thought, okay, well, that's it. So I must say a big thank you to Sarah Payne, who has also got her own YouTube channel. Um, I'll put a link in the uh, box below. And Mr. Nicholas Ball, who doesn't have a YouTube channel, but he is an amazing improv quilter, one of our teachers here at Crafty Monkeys. Check him out if you like improv quilting. He is brilliant. He's got a great Instagram account. His Instagram, I'll put it in the link below, but it's Quilts from the Attic. That's the name. So. First of all, um, I'll go with Sarah Payne's. So she said, um, you can save money on, oh, now I'm hoping this is not yours, Gary. You can save money on wadding by sewing smaller pieces together. That's, well, that's one of mine. So oh, uh, she okay. got another one. Hang on, she got another one. Um, she said, make sure, well, she's got a tip with it, which might, okay, I'll tell you what then, you do that one first. All right. Then she's got a tip with it, which I think might help the money saving okay, as well. Hey, right. So you, okay. You do it so, first, then. And and I know the three of us. There was both Sarah. Well, Sarah's also mentioned it. Nicholas yeah. mentioned it, and yes. I I so was doing it. One. So I've made up a sample, and that is about using batten. So we've got this is a synthetic batten, but it comes. You can get bamboo batten. You can get wool batten. All types of batten. This is that also called in, wadding because if you're wadding, in America. It's, yeah. uh, is it is it wadding in America and batting here? Mm. Or is it the way? People need to write in and tell us where, what do you call this? It goes in between, it can go in between your quilts. It can go in between, sometimes I line the inside of cushions before I put my cushion pad in there. If I've done a lot of work on the, on the cushion, like a lot of embroidery or stitch and applique, I just sometimes back the cushion with this yes. wadding. I mean, it's only fine. But it's really, it's, and I, and I quite like this synthetic, but it's fine. Anyway, you end up like here, loads of scraps, useless, tiny, well, you think they're useless, tiny little scraps. What you do, and it's, I call it, and I think I've heard this from other people, I call it as in Franken batting. So as in Frankenstein batting. So okay. here, let me put that to one side. So what I've done is I have started to join, I've joined my batting. So I joined it like Frank Frankenstein. Yeah. I've joined it. Look at this. Just like got the little Frankenstein stitches. And what I've done is on my sewing machine. So I've started, I've put two pieces together to start with. Right side to right side. If there is a right side to your batting. And then I've just done a zigzag on a wide, not a wide zigzag, but the length is quite wide. So I think my width of my, um, of my zigzag was about a three. So it might be three mil. And zigzag. And what I've done, as I've as I've run it through the machine, let me go this way. As the machine's going zigzag, 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 I've let the stitch drop off the side of the two seams together. So the stitch drops off, drops off, drops. So it's just literally almost like just catching the edge. I've then folded it out and then I've slightly just pulled it. And I, the other thing I did, if I can find, but I've got a pair of scissors here, is I've just used this on my scissors, this round bit round the handle, and I've just 
rubbed it like that. Now we used to use this technique when we used to join leather together. When we were working, I did um, some uh, garments in sort of sheepskin and leather. And this is how you join all the leather pieces together to create a great big length of coat. So you join all the, making sure that the, the grains run in in the right, right way and then you zigzag and then you just rub it with the scissors and you can rub it on the wrong side as well and rub that and rub it and give it a press. But you actually end up, by the time you keep doing that, you can end up with quite a big amount of batting, wadding, that you can use, I mean, you could have enough that you could use in a quilt if you wanted to, but I use these pieces for maybe um, interlining into bags. As I said, I might use it, definitely would use it under a, a cushion. So none of these scraps go to waste. You use them all and you can save yourself a little bit of money. You know, if you think you've got meters and meters of batting and bags and bags of scraps, you could yeah. save yourself quite a bit of money. So that's my number one tip that all of us, all the, well, the three tutors from Crafty Monkeys all said immediately, Franken batting. That's the first one. Yes. Right, now and, and what Sarah said was, make sure your edges are cut straight and you put the two pieces side by side, not overlapping on your creator ridge, and then use yes. a wide zigzag stitch to sew the pieces together. <laughs> she did it. So she, there you go. Said, exactly the same thing. That's really, really good. Well that done. Yeah, so okay. everyone, I think, to do that. Okay, right, eight short. Is there another one? So that was you? that was yours. So yeah. my next one came from Nicholas Ball. And I mean, I yes, I mean, as soon as I said it, I went, oh, of course. And you know, it's a really simple thing. Uh, it is chain piecing. And what that means, of course, is that when you're sewing, if you're sewing lots of small pieces, you just keep going and you don't cut the thread. So you're not, because we all do it, don't we? You cut the thread in the sewing yeah. machine and you go, cut, and then you've got this thread. Yeah. And it's like that whole adage, isn't it? Saving the pennies equals the pounds or whatever that phrase is. Yeah. But it's the same because when you're pulling that cut, cut, look at all this thread, it's just mm. going to waste. So keep sewing, keep chain piecing it all together and don't cut the thread in between. That was Nicholas's top tip, but I think that that's a good one. And time, and time saving as well. The yes. amount of time you save, not just in pennies, but the time. And you know, yeah. time can be money you know, for someone, or you've only got a certain amount of time to do your, your crafting. So you want to get as much done in that time as possible. So yeah, lovely. Yeah. That's a really yeah. good one. Well done. Okay. Okay, right. Me next. Yes. Me next. Okay. So I'm going to do a couple of arty ones because we're, yes, we sew, but also I know people that follow us that do some of my art projects as well. So what, uh, one of the best things, which I, I mean, I can't, I didn't invent this. I saw this online and I've used it now for quite a while. And it's actually making a paint palette out of a plate, Ooh. but a paint palette that stops your paint from drying out. So I quite often use my ordinary dinner service plates. Yeah. I have, again, this could be a money saving tip. I only ever have China in white. Always all my life, since I left home, I've only ever bought white china. So when everything breaks, I've, it all matches. If I got like a cup broken, I just buy another white cup. So if it's always white, it always matches. Anyway, that's going off. That's a little sub tip. <laughs> I like to use acrylics in my work. So I use acrylics on paper. I use it on oh, oh, But acrylics are really great for... Um, painting onto fabric and they are quite durable so you can paint onto fabrics you can wash it gently and it are iron and it really stains the fabric it really works really well these this acrylic in particular this is quite a cheap acrylic and I will go back to this in a minute but this is but acrylics have a tendency once you put them on the palette one the air will be drying them out so unless you work with them quickly it's dried out and then you're having to add more because that paint's dried out. The other thing that happens is it will stain, it can stain, because it stains fabric, it can also stain ceramics as well. And I'd noticed that I'd put it directly on a nice dinner plate and then I put it in the dishwasher, washed it, and I could still see faint ghost marks of the color on the plate, no matter what I did to try and get it off. So I think, oh, well, this is no good. Then online, I saw this little technique of creating your own palette, which stops the paint from drying out and it lasts nearly all day long, even if oh. you just put a blob there. And it, right, so what you do, you get your palette, you get some kitchen roll, and you just put maybe a couple of sheets of kitchen roll on the palette first of all, all right? Yeah. You've got your little, your plate with your palette. You then, I'm, look, look, I'm like Blue Peter. I've got everything in front of you me. Are. It's and you are. just like watching Blue Peter presenter. You then pour a little bit of water, not too much water, just onto that 
kitchen roll let it all soak up and you can use again you can use really cheap kitchen roll just so it's like nice and wet then you take a piece of baking parchment not it's, it's not greased one it's just ordinary baking parchment and you put your baking parchment onto the plate so and if you feel if you could feel feely vision you'll feel that that is not damp it's not wet coming through it's just stone cold it's really cold and so therefore with the coldness it doesn't, the paint doesn't dry out. Now, I will be going back to this in a minute, but I'm gonna let you do one more, okay? Oh, okay, right, All okay. Right. Let's remove this for a second then, lovely, go back to us. Okay. Right, well, now another one that Nicholas Ball came up with, and I've actually, um, there's like two or three within here, so I think I think we're gonna have a, like nine tips by the end of this. <laughs> because, you know, our Crafty Monkeys, um, we work with a, a chap called Chris English uh, on Instagram. He's called A Full English. Um, and he is very much into uh, sustainable sewing. He's very much into recycling his fabrics. And he will go to a market and he'll find a really dirty old orange jumpsuit or something that some wife has said, oh, you know, you've been using that husband for 20 years. Or a, I don't know if that's a really sexist thing I've said there. But she's put it in the secondhand shop and it's ended up on a market store. He will buy that. And then he will, obviously he'll wash it, but he'll use it. But even if there are stains in it, you know, he will just use bits of it and cut around those stains. But, and, and often what Chris has said is, if you go to a charity, if you want to make um, a lovely cushion or something, and you want a really good quality um, brushed cotton, to buy that new fabric will be very expensive. So go to a charity shop, get a man's shirt, because often clothing is made, if it's a cotton shirt, it'll be a good quality cotton because obviously it's made to go against the skin. So then if you buy a, a charity shop sh uh, shirt that is, you know, for like three quid or four quid, you're going to get a lot more fabric than you would for three or four pounds going into a fabric shop and saying, can I please buy that lovely yeah. brushed cotton or whatever. Yeah. So absolutely thrift shop, go to the um, secondhand charity shop, and you know get your fabrics that way so that's definitely a top tip is to use yeah. fabrics in that way um and you know something else as well that i thought about is that when you go so this is my tip now so this is now i don't know how many this is now four. when you go to that charity shop look for bags and purses jeans anything with a zip now you might hate the bag right but the bag might be a quid. Take the zip out of the bag. Because a lot of these bags and purses use, if they've been, you know, in a, a shop, if they've been sold in like, you know, warehouse or new look or something, it's probably a decent zip in there. Yeah. So once again, great way to get your zips. So you could just be, you know, instead of once again, going to a shop and spending, I don't know how much a zip would be, Gary, but I'm thinking four or yeah. five pounds. Well, I've It'd be more than a pound. Um, it could possibly, yeah, could be about two pound fifty, something like that. So, yeah. but not only do you take the zip out, but you've got the fabric there as well. And I think with yes. that whole scenario, what you've just mentioned, from the scraps of fabric through to taking the zip out, is exactly going back to look at what our grandparents and generations before they used to do. We had the button tin. We had like a bag full of zips that had been taken out of garments. But if you look at quilting, the history of quilting, it was from scraps of exactly. garments, fabrics, even down to where um, uh, like flour and um, sugar and rice were put into sacks with printed on them. And then they were all cut up and used in the quilts as well. So absolutely, it's about, let's go back and have a look how they did it before, because I think we've got so used to um, just, oh, I'll have that and I'll have that from the shop and I'll put that together. Well, yes, you can. In it, but it's going to cost you a premium amount of money. But what fun, like Chris English does, is so clever where he found, found fabrics and how he puts them together. And I just think, you know, the, the outcome is just as beautiful, um, the same as a pizza, like fabrics that you bought from a shop. It's just the same. So it's really good. Yeah. Yeah. And really ask good. your friends and family as well. You know, because everybody throws out bags of clothing, particularly if they have children. Uh, and particularly teenage girls, I know this because we have sent <laughs> bags and bags of clothing to the second hand shop. 
So mm. ask your friends and family or put it onto your Facebook. If anybody is taking a bag of clothes to the charity, please, can I have that bag for myself? Yeah. Or, you know, I will take it for you and I will just hand pick some things that I want. Can I have a look through your bag before you, I take it to the charity for you? Because mm. there will be some fabrics in there, like this dress, for example. You know, if this is, I mean, this is not an expensive dress, but, you know, I've got, I've got dresses like this where I've gone, it doesn't fit me anymore. I don't like it anymore. I'm going to send it off. This is great fabric. So, you know, always ask your friends and family. Also look on Facebook and Instagram because there are, I'm sure, places on Facebook or Instagram accounts from people who often are, you know, once again, giving away their fabrics, swapping scraps, going to sewing groups. Does anybody want to swap anything? And our retreat recently, um, you know, people said, I brought some fabric. I'm just going to leave it in a corner if anybody wants it. Sewers love no, to just exchange exactly. fabrics like that. So, you know, yeah. go to places like that. And another place as well, this is another tip. Oh my goodness me, they're flowing out of me. Another thing you could do is go to your local factory shops or manufacturers, if there are any nearby, ask them if they have any remnants of fabric. We used to do the same with a printing shop down the road. Um, I, If I needed anything for a project, I would go in and say, have you got any offcuts of paper or card? Um, and quite often they had been doing a big job for a big company and then they had bits of card left and they would go yeah you can have this card and then we would chop it up and use it for greetings cards that's mm -hmm. you know, that's what we used to do so then you could just make lovely greetings cards for your friends and family so you know things like that if there's if you're on the art and craft side if there is a local printers they may have yeah. offcuts of paper for you and card as i say it's what you used to do but the same with fabric shops as well um you know and it may be even your fabric shops it's like anything isn't it there's a kitchen place down the road and it says in the window, new showrooms coming soon. Do you know what that means? All those kitchen sets will be sold as a real kitchen for someone at a lot less. The yeah. same with fabric shops. If they've come to the end of a supply or something, you can go in and go, do you have any fabrics on offer? Is there anything in the back that you don't want anymore? I would, I will give you some mm -hmm. money for it. Because they might bring yeah. out a massive roll or something and go, oh, this never sold. Well, have it for blah, blah, blah. Just go in and negotiate. Let's face it, everybody needs to make money at the moment, Gary. So go yeah. in and negotiate with these shops. Go and ask them. Because if you if they're going to get a few pounds for something compared to nothing, they'll take it. So, Absolutely. yeah. Like end of line stock, dead stock, end anything of line like that. Stock. They may not have even sold it in their sale. So, yeah, really good point. So actually, can I see it from here? Right. I just, you know, me, sometimes I get up and get something from the back of the room. You say yeah. about scraps. I've got a bag full of stuff, right? Hang on. <laughs> I'm hanging on. I'm hanging on, love. Right, hang on, hang on. Right, here we go. Right, so look, have your bag of scraps. This yeah. is a bag of sheet, shirts, all sorts of things. And I've sort of sourced it out, but they're all natural. And what I've done is I've overdyed them. So I've overdyed yeah. all the scraps. Then I've made little books from them. Look. <laughs> Amazing! I so love that. They're like that little tip. book covers. Yeah. So they're going to be. So I have them. You know, it could be for Christmas presents, and you know, I just make them when I've got a chance, um, a little bit of time, and I just piece them all together and then stitch over the top of them. And I have a little stack of them at the back. And if it's someone's birthday or a little extra presents for Christmas, I said, right, I'll have one of my books. So there you are. That's so that tied in with. <laughs> that's there's a class completely right not there, planned. Gary. Gary, there's a class. <laughs> there's a class. Mm. Scraps dying making mm. into a book there is a class right there is a class there. there we might have to do it in two parts we've got to dry it yeah. <laughs> but maybe we're doing two halves like right do it this session give us scraps it. dye it then dry it then come back and i'll show you how to make put it all together. love it let's do it because maybe. i think that i think that's a fantastic idea a lovely yeah. gift so yes yeah, so these are great way ways to reuse fabrics another fabric to look at as well is tea towels because Gary mm. has got a great mm. reindeer class at the moment with us. Yes. This reindeer is made from a tea towel. So and know, I've forgotten because yes. I'd sent you that sample and I'd forgotten that I'd use. And the just the lovely bit of the tea towel that I used is um on a linen tea towel where you've got it's like a different colour and it's written in and it always says yeah. glassware or or whatever. And I just cut that off as a section in this little reindeer and it just makes it look really, really nice. So yeah, any look out for things that perhaps you wouldn't necessarily see. And I just think it makes your creative work so much more enjoyable and different and a little bit could be quirky, could be a little bit yeah. more thoughtful into it when you've used 
found materials and yes. fabrics for yeah. your work. Mm. And I will come back to that one as my next tip. If you would like to continue with your next tip, Gary. Okay, right. So my third tip is I'm going back to my plate. Okay. And I'm using my look, this really cheap acrylic. So it's a cheap acrylic. Um, and so quite often with cheap acrylics, what tends to happen is they tend to be a little bit watery. So the more you pay for an acrylic, the the more the um, the thicker and denser and the more opaque the, the pigment's going to be. I'm just going to squeeze a little bit out without getting it over myself. Whoops, come on, paint. Why, oh, there we go. Right. Probably more than I need. And I've got a little paintbrush and I've got a bit of paint paper here. So what can happen is when we've like, we get our, on our nice new, now our um, paint palette's going to keep it nice and wet for a while. What can tend to happen is that the paint can tend to be a little bit, wishy-washy it can tend to be a little bit um see-through and so maybe we have to do lots of layers if that happens and you've like you've got the paint you think, oh it's not really the quite the good enough quality what you can do which i'm going to just bring into view here is you can add now this is cornstarch or what we call in this country corn flour and it's you know it's what you find things like that but this is the I wouldn't use the custard powder because it tends to have a yellowy tinge and the gravy powder will have a brown tinge. But just if you can get just the ordinary white cornstarch and you don't need a lot of it. And I would advise not to add a lot, but you can just put a little bit on your, your mix in on your palette. And what you can do is you can actually mix the cornstarch with the acrylic paint until you get a nice smooth finish. And then you get a much denser Oh, can you see yeah. that's much yeah. denser yeah and so less opaque by just by adding a little just an extra ingredient which probably isn't you know isn't i wouldn't add too much because what could happen if you get too much corn flour it could then as it dries it could all start to crack but you just need a little bit so just a little dab until you get it to the density that you want but the difference in just the yeah. cheaper version so this isn't very expensive i just found this in a hardware store and it's fine a fraction of the price but if you just add a little bit of corn uh, cornstarch corn flour you get a much denser color so just something to bear in mind with your for any arts and crafts projects um even if you were painting onto um the fabric you could use that as well so that was my that's my final tip for today well i think that's a very very good one i have to yeah. say yes i like it that's brilliant and i love that orange that is one of my favorite colors <laughs> um, well, talking about colour, my other top tip was, and it's something that you just said, and actually is something that uh, a lovely lady called Tammy Silvers, who has just done a, a VIP uh, club. We, we run a club here at Crafty Monkeys called the VIP Club, and every month it's downloadable content from a tutor in their chosen subject area. Tammy is very much into gradation of um gradation in a project by using fabrics and she does it using patterned fabric she uses scraps she um is creating her own colors so like you've got the kind of ombre a, a manufacturer will give you an ombre effect yeah. on a piece of fabric she said you know that's not what we're doing here it's not that ombre but it is a gradation and it's really clever and i think there's a little um task for yourself when you are making your next project to try and save money use your scraps and go through your scraps and try and find a gradation. I'm sure on YouTube, there'll be lots of um, things about gradation. We're actually gonna be running a Nicholas Ball class next year on gradation. Uh, he's gonna do triangles using different scraps to make them uh, a gradation across the piece. So try and think about that as well, because that's, then you don't just feel like, oh, I can't afford the fabrics that I want. I can't afford the colors that I want. So I'm gonna have to use my things from my scraps. Well, why not try and create the colours you want from your scraps, you know, using a gradation? And what a time is, for example, if you've got, you know, like a, a pattern and you've got olive green in there with a flash of gold, and then you try and find another scrap that has got, you know, maybe a lighter green, and then you're heading, and then you keep maybe picking up bits of gold, and then you're sort of heading through, and then the green maybe goes into a blue bit in the same tone, and it just goes through and you create this lovely gradation of colour. So, you know, don't see as these money saving things as, oh, I have to save money. As you said, with the heating, you know, yeah. be positive about it somehow. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. try and, and maybe do that. Um, 
So there's there's a tip to use the gradation. And I've just seen another one actually online, and maybe you can talk about it. Um, so using this is this is quite good. Um, using fabric as interfacing. Could you talk more yes. about that, yeah. Gary? Okay, so um, interfacing is what you put in between to like it's in your collar on your shirt. It might be in the yeah. cuff down the placket it just gives a little bit more body and tend to use it on say we were making a jacket it'd be on the front panels yeah. now we use interfacing for um there's usually got it's bonded though you do get ones that aren't it tends to be synthetic actually and not woven uh, but if you look traditionally back it always was woven and it never necessarily had glue on it you didn't have glue that you ironed and pressed it on and stuck on. It usually was like tacked in and you did like little tacking stitches just to hold it in place while you sewed the garment up. Things you can use, so you can use things like you could use um, an inflate, it could be a lighter weight cotton. It's usually inter interlining isn't as thick as the outer fabric, it's slightly thinner, but it just gives that outer fabric a little bit more body. Yeah. So things like a finer cotton, you could go even finer than that and use like a muslin to back a, pe a piece of fabric to give it a little bit more body. You could even use organza. So I would use a natural organza, be it a cotton organza or a silk organza. I try to, I tend to stay away from synthetics because they will just act differently depending on what you're backing on. So if you're backing onto cotton wool, silk, or whatever, if you put a synthetic on there, the synthetic is going to act one way and the natural is going to act another. So tend to keep them apart. But um, yeah, so you can either use tacking to hold it in place while you stitch it to give that, it gives it a little bit more, bit more firmer. You could use um, your, there's a spray mount or a spray that you use for quilting that's semi-permanent that you can pull apart. So you could just spray, you could back it onto a finer piece of fabric and then cut out your shapes or when you sewed it together and it would stay in place. So yeah, rather than buying that pre-glued um, pre synthetic roll of, of interfacing, make your own or see what's available, you know. Um, I have, I mean, apart from inter um, doing sort of like cotton and linen in behind a, garment I've also interlined with things that perhaps an old blanket uh, a fleecy blanket something like that so there's always other things you can buy that you don't or might have at home that you don't have to go to a shop to buy and are, are just as good so there you go another top mm. that's good isn't it it's good it's quite quite and like I say see all these things as a positive as, as a challenge how yeah. you can save money and what you can do but not only are you saving money we're helping to save the planet as well because we're not all going out and constantly buying and buying and buying. You know, particularly what we're talking yeah. about reusing or using fabrics as interfacing or asking friends and family for their fabric stash or secondhand clothing and things like that. You know, that's uh, a really great thing to do. So um, definitely uh, positive on all fronts. I, I have to say, you know, it might just take you a little bit more time to unpick those butters or it might just, or to wash that shirt or to cut the large panels out that you want to do. But then that's the whole part of the practice it's all part of the getting it rather than it's got to be instant and I bought it and I can make it now it's about preparing and getting ready it's about taking a little bit more time about it and I would think that that actually would be better for us as you know practitioners just rather than just go warm straight into it fish bash bosh it's done let's just get that planning done while you're unpicking those buttons a project could be forming in your head how it's happening so it's about time giving yourself time to yeah. taking us back to that mindfulness really absolutely and also as well just one final note just to sort of say about that um is to um look you know talking about how we see things from a different perspective um just in terms of your wardrobe before you give things away think if you can actually just change them a little bit i've saw this this amazing lady um i've forgotten her instagram i'll put it in the in the thing below converter closets i think it is and she lives mm -hmm. in new york and she uh, just re she'll she'll find a vintage dress and then it'll be too big for her but she can see the fabric is incredible and then what she'll do is she'll change it up and make it quite modern um you know if it's not work I'm not saying vintage clothes I mean you can buy the most amazing vintage ball gown from the 40s and not have to do a thing to it but if she feels something is just like the wrong neckline for her or whatever she'll change it and make it quite funky but using the amazing fabric and keeping a lot of the essence of the original garment and I did the same with a dress the other day it was a long dress. I'd seen her, to be honest, 
And so I just thought, oh, I love what she's done with that dress. And I had this dress that is like a very little thing like this with a sort of long tie that you sort of hangs down here. And then it had a puff like that. And then it was just a long, long dress and it was too much fabric, but it's a really lovely fabric, like a dog tooth. So I thought, what can I do? So I went in to see the lady who does all the sewing and she said, well, don't start worrying about the neck. So why don't you wrap the tie around several times and put a brooch there? Then you get that big thick neck, which is going to look like that lady's done, but you're not spending a fortune. I thought, never even thought about that. And she said, and if you just get a beautiful brooch, it would look yeah. amazing. I thought, yes. But then what she did with the cuff was, she said, the cuff is like that. And then she said, if we take that off and we turn it, so instead of it being like that, it's now the lengthways yeah so she was she's opening the cuff and she's putting it that way so then you'll have that very strong cuff there so let's see if there's a fabric there was just enough because it was quite a, a loose cuff there was just enough to take it to there so now i'm going to have this long cuff on this dress so which then will balloon this part out and make it look so now you've got this high neck this long cuff and then she said and we'll reuse the buttons as well and put those on the cuff and then she said, and instead of like chopping off the length, she'd just use a really big, thick black belt to cinch it in because now you've got this neck and this cuff. So from this dress, which is quite, oh, what's this little tie thing? And it's just rethinking the dress. Yeah. It's going to cost yeah. like, you know, I don't know. I can't, I'm not, I'm not proficient enough to do that with a cuff. I can not do it. Yet. Not yet. After a few more lessons, <laughs> but it's about eight quid. So instead of chucking it in the bin or mm. I'm going to a wedding, instead of rebuying a dress for eight pounds, I'm going to have this really changed of outfit Lovely. so have a look at your wardrobe and see how you can change things and how you can repurpose things think outside the box mm. that's it well i oh. i hope dear youtuber that we have provided you with some top tips if you've got any top tips please put yes. them below because i think we'll do this again right i think there's a yes, there's there's another... so many. Yeah, in a few weeks time, we're doing another lot of tips for people. Yeah, definitely, definitely should be a, a regular thing because we all need to save money, but we all need to start looking at changing the way we look at things and repurposing things. So absolutely, let's do it. Um, but if you've got any tips, put them underneath. We would love you to like this, uh, please. Uh, it helps us to get into the algorithm and helps other people find us so they can save some money as well. Um, and um, we'd love it if you subscribe to the channel because as I say, we put out content every single week. Um, and it is a, a wide variety of content. So uh, please do subscribe to us and hit the like button. That would be lovely. And if you hit the notification bell, the bell, little ding dong bell, uh, which is down there, then you will also be notified of when we go live, not live on this one, but we are live on lots of our uh, Friday sessions. We just can't do it this Friday because I'm doing a live class on Friday with Grafty Monkeys. Uh, so uh, yeah, hit the bell. But lovely, thank you so much to you, lovely thank Gary. You. Um, of course, when people are watching this, all the content will be out of order. But for us, if anybody's watching it on this particular Friday, which is going to be the 14th, 14th of October. Yeah. Is this is going live. Uh, it's going to be on the YouTube channel. So on the next Friday, uh, which will be... The 21st of October. Well done. There you go. What are we going to do, Gary? Well, I thought it might be quite nice to get you to do a little bit of, um, to learn a bit of fashion design. So I'm going to... <laughs> Hello! Are we going to St Martin's College? Have you enrolled me? Am I going well, to as good as. Design? You're coming to my College of Fashion Design. So I'm going to just get you to do a little bit of, it's a little bit of a, a sort of crafty art, um, but we're going to do a little bit of fun fashion design. You don't need really any specialist equipment. Just need some paper, pen, maybe a pair of scissors and um, even some magazine tears and things like that. So we're going to get we're going to get you just doing a little bit of fashion design. Fabulous. I'm just checking. I've got the scissors. Yeah, I am ready. Let's do okay. it. Brilliant. <laughs> OK, well, that ties in with the cough thing, doesn't it? It does indeed. Sounds like you're already there. <laughs> Lovely. So that'll be the next session. Right then, well, we shall let everybody go and uh, I shall let you go, Gary. So thank you, lovely YouTuber. And, uh, you know, like I say, if you've not done with us now, click on the Tea Time Tutorials because there's plenty more videos. Okay, see you next time, people. Bye. <laughs>